Hey YouTube, what is going on? It's Hancho here, back with another video. While today's video is titled Controller Input Delay, there is plenty of tweaks in here that also apply to mouse and keyboard, but I wanted to keep the two videos separate so that way it was easier to find on my channel. So there's a Google Drive link and a file dropper link in the description that'll bring up this pack. First thing we're gonna do is create a system restore. So you're gonna go to your control panel, system, system protection, and then create a restore point. System restore is the easiest way to revert settings when you screw things up. And you can also create one after in case you apply more tweaks later and you wanna come back to this point. So our first step is gonna be timer resolution. So if you have less than 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can check in your task manager under performance and memory. If you have less than 16 gigabytes, you might see better results using ISLC. So I'm gonna show that right now. So as you can see, my timer resolution is already at 0.5 because of what I will do in the next step. But if you're only using this, you're gonna to wanna to set this to 0.5. Check enable. Set the polling rate to the highest value. This will allow for the least amount of CPU usage. We're gonna to wanna to change the free memory is lower than. What this will do is clear this standby list and working set or whatever value you set here. So I have been doing a million things on my PC and normally I would reset before I actually play. But if you're the type of person that uses a lot of things on their PC while playing, you can also do this even if you have more than 16 gigabytes of RAM. So I'm just gonna set it to half of this number. We're gonna check the box for start minimized and auto start monitoring. And then we're gonna check start. So now we've seen that it cleared my standby list because it's less than the 8,000 number that I set here. Now, if you have 16 gigabytes or more of RAM and you don't run anything while you're playing, what we're gonna do is move set timer resolution service to our C disk. So it'll look like this. Then we're gonna open up command prompt as admin. You can also go into run, CMD, control, shift, enter. Even if you used ILSC, still run these three. It is okay if your platform clock is not found. That just means you don't have that value on your motherboard. Then we're gonna make sure we copy this whole statement here. Paste it. Now it's gonna tell me I already have it installed. So what this is, is a service. So you can check in task manager, services, open service. It's called set timer resolution. Right now it won't be running for you, but the next time you restart your computer, it will run because it is set on automatic. But you can always right click and press start if you feel like it won't automatically start for you. Our next step is disabling features in Device Manager. So I've created a document here, but you're gonna open up Device Manager, View, Devices by Connection. This is the easiest way to go through and do them. And I'll just scroll through my list here so you can see what I have disabled. But these are all the features that you're gonna to wanna to disable. Now if you use a USB 3.0 port that's connected to your GPU, you do not want to disable that. But most likely you do not use any USB ports that are connected to your GPU. To disable a device, all you do is right click and check disable device. If you have questions about this, feel free to ask in my Discord. That link is also in the description down below. Now in the IRQs folder, we're gonna open up MSI mode run as administrator, so right click. Then we're gonna check our box next to our GPU and select high. Next, we're gonna go into the Microsoft Corporation folder, interrupt affinity policy tool, and the x64.exe and run as administrator. We're gonna open up device manager, view devices by connection, we're also gonna open up Task Manager and go to the CPU tab under Performance. I added a text document to help for this. Now you don't have to use these exact values, they might not be the best for you, but this is a good place to start. So for me, I have eight cores and eight processors. So I'm gonna set my GPU and the PCI bridge to CPU two and the USB to CPU four. Now how you find which one is which in case you have multiple GPUs, 
and to be able to locate your PCI bridge is view devices by connection. Scroll down until you find the PCI bridge with your GPU. You're gonna right click on your GPU, go to properties, and under location, you'll see bus one device zero function zero. In the interrupt tool, you can press N or whatever the first letter is to scroll through this faster until you find one zero zero. And then you will press set mask, CPU two, okay. As long as you ran the interrupt affinity policy tool as administrator, these errors do not matter. Do not restart the device right now. Now we're gonna go back in and find our PCI bridge. So in device manager, we're gonna click whatever the GPU's under, go to properties, zero one zero. You can click in the box and then press P to go through everything that starts with P until you find zero one zero. We're gonna set our mask, CPU two, click okay. Do not restart the device right now. And now for our USB, we're gonna right click on our host controller. This will likely be found under a PCI root. We're gonna go to properties, 020. Now I know mine's at the top, but to also find the name, you can go to details, device description, and it will match the name in here, 020. Same as here. Set our mask, CPU four, okay. No, and we're all set with that step. Now after you restart your computer, you can go check in MSI utility to see if you can set your PCI bridge to MSI mode as well. It will most likely not say it's supported. So if you do black screen with this, I'm warning you right now that it's not my fault, but most of the time you should be able to enable MSI mode for your PCI bridge as long as your GPU supports it. If you haven't already, you need to restart before going on to the next step. Okay, so now that we've restarted, we're gonna go back into the IRQs folder, change your IRQ value to your own, and then we're gonna go to run MS info 32, hardware resources, IRQs, and scroll down. So we're gonna find our GPU and our USB controller. Now your numbers might be similar or the same as to what I have in here but you're going to right click on the reg file, check edit, and then change these numbers to match the numbers in here. So your GPU, you're gonna to wanna to set to one, and your USB, you wanna to set to a D word of two. So now our next step is registry edits. So I have three registry edits in here. This is for controller and keyboard. Disabling full screen optimizations and game DVR. And then power settings. I added a separate folder for this because some people will have higher input delay and some people will have a lower input delay. What this file does is sets the thread priority for your USB and your keyboard and mouse. And then the revert file obviously reverts it. So this is something that you can add at the end and try to see if it's better on or off for you. The next step is going to be overclocking our controller. Now this doesn't actually overclock the controller, it overclocks the USB port the controller is connected to. We're gonna go to driver and then setup, change devices to all, and now it'll say something related to Xbox, or it'll say it over here under the child name as in gaming controller or something along those lines. This is also a way to tell what USB controller it's connected to. Most likely it will, it will be set to B interval of four. So we're gonna click on it, change it to a thousand, check filter on device, check install service. And now unplug the device and plug it back in. Now you can see that my controller is now set to an interval of one, which is a polling rate of a thousand. Our next step is going to be disabling our unused USB ports. Now I have a picture of my manual, but you can search your own manual or your motherboard, or even Google USB port map 
or your motherboard and you might find an image like I have here which will tell you the number of each port which will correlate to your BIOS USB ports. So to enter BIOS you're going to restart your computer and either press the delete key or your function 2 key. When you're in BIOS you'll likely have a screen that looks like this under your advanced tab and advanced USB configuration. If you go to the USB single port control It'll show you the numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, however many USB ports you have. As long as you don't disable all of them, even if you ended up disabling the one your mouse is connected to, you could always just plug it into a different port to go back into BIOS and change it. Now after we've done that, we're going to go to the remove old devices folder, device cleanup. You may have to run as administrator, check devices, select all devices again, remove selected. And now we're gonna open up Fortnite and go through the Fortnite settings. But first, we're gonna set Fortnite to normal priority. While you might see slightly less FPS, like less than 10 FPS difference, you'll see way more consistent mouse or controller movement, and you will have a lot less stutters when you're playing. Under the controller options tab, we want to put our edit hold time all the way down to 0.1. Disable the foot controller, and put the foot controller dead zone to 1% and 1%. Under the audio tab, make sure your sound quality is on low. Under controller settings, you want to bind edit and a switch mode edit to something on your controller. I use paddles that are connected to the D-pad, so that's why it looks like this. A couple weeks ago, people started changing the platform to generic for lower input delay. However, it seems to be messing with the dead zones of your joysticks after the Fortnite update that reduced the file size. Make sure you bind the edit and switch mode edit to build controls as well. If you don't actually use replays for clips, please turn them off. Lastly, we want to make sure we have all of these on as low as possible. You can turn up your view distance a little bit if you want. If you are very CPU bound, it could help to turn up your textures a little bit as it might increase your FPS. But if FPS is not an issue, keep this on low. Now I will touch on this in a later video as well. For the lowest input delay possible, you wanna have threaded optimization off as well as allow multi-thread rendering off. Results will vary with this as you might see a significant drop in FPS. So to have the highest FPS, you want to have threaded optimization on as well as multi-thread rendering, but to have the lowest input delay, you want both features to be off. When both features are off, you will also have more consistent frame times, which is something I will touch on in a future video. Before you change videos, please leave a like and subscribe if this video helped you, as well as creating another system restore point. It's a good habit to create system restore points if you're at a point on your PC where you're very happy with the performance because if you make a tweak and you don't know what you did, it's hard to change it back and you do not want to restart all the videos you did in the past. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.